What's up everybody? Gen X Divnet Investor here. In this video you'll learn about companies that became dividend aristocrats, but then were later unfortunately removed from the prestigious list. So if you appreciate content like this, then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. I recommend you watch this entire video as I'll be sharing some neat anecdotes near the end. And I hope that everyone had a happy Thanksgiving, or at least a happy Thursday. I'm so grateful for being able to share the dividend investing message with everyone around the world. Okay, so here's a nice chart from Motley Fool that explains what dividend aristocrats are. The classic definition is simply a public company that has increased its dividend for 25 consecutive years. In addition, they're supposed to be part of the SP500 and have at least a $3 billion market cap, along with having good day-to-day -day trading volumes on the exchanges. There's a financial company called S&P Global, ticker SPGI, that manages the methodology behind what a dividend aristocrat is, and they actually are dividend aristocrat themselves. You old-timers might remember them previously called McGraw-Hill. I'll include a link in the description of this video to the official dividend aristocrat methodology, along with a link to all the current dividend aristocrats on the wiki. Now, when most of us think of dividend aristocrats, we think of companies like J&J, ExxonMobil, Pepsi, McDonald's, etc., all of which I'm long in. I have 26 tickers in my dividend portfolio, and about half of them are aristocrats, and I expect the other half to become aristocrats in the future. So companies like Apple, Microsoft, Southern Company, Home Depot, etc. Aristocrats are often highly prized in the dividend investing community since we want our portfolios to have reliable, increasing dividends. It's pretty amazing when you realize that the aristocrats have increased their dividend through recessions and stock market crashes and wars and all of that. Thus, they are companies that are often are amongst the best of the best in their industry, and being the best often commands a premium on price since they are highly sought out. So try to buy them when they're on sale. With all that being said, does that mean that dividend aristocrats are good investments? Well, historically speaking, they've generally been pretty good, though good is in the eye of the beholder. Beyond a growing dividend, they also tend to be less volatile than the overall market, and they tend to have reliable cash flows and sales and such. Today there are 64 dividend aristocrats, and almost every year you'll see some additions and subtractions from the list. Note there are also some other dividend aristocrat lists, like the one that has European companies on it. But even great companies can run into hard times, as the pandemic showed us. Nothing enables hard times as a recession, which is when you tend to see more dividend cuts. Like in the recession we had in 2009, 19 total companies fell off the aristocrat list after cutting their dividends, and about half of them were banks or financial companies. And when a company cuts their dividend, then investors usually get mad and often hit the sell button, which then drives the stock price down in the short run. So most management teams with long records of growing their dividends will usually try very hard to keep growing them. For this video, I'll just go over the companies that have fallen off the aristocrat list in the last 15 years. And let's kick things off with someone that just got removed from the list, and that's AT&T, which lost its dividend aristocrat status when it spun off its Warner Brothers media division and combined it with Discovery. And in doing that, they also cut their dividend. Another company that was removed from the list in 2022 was People's United Financial, which was removed when its merger with M&T Bank Corporation was finalized. In 2021, five companies got removed from the aristocrat list. The first was Raytheon Technologies, which is one of the largest aerospace and defense manufacturers in the world, which was formed via the merger of the United Tech Corps and Raytheon Company. Before the merger, United spun off Otis Elevator Company and Carrier Corporation, which does HVAC and building automation and such. So Otis and Carrier were actually added to the aristocrat list in 2020 during the spin-offs, but then were removed in 2021. Another company that was removed in 2021 was Stryker Corporation, a medical tech company. I think that they could have been on the list, but apparently there was a discrepancy with Stryker's dividend growth history, where until 2008, Stryker paid dividends annually, but then they switched to quarterly, and in making that change, they must not have adhered to the rules that SP Global called out. I'd never looked at Stryker before, but it seemed kind of interesting as I started learning about it. Another company that was removed last year was one I'm long in, and that's Leggett & Platt, ticker LEG, a furniture and bedding consumer discretionary company. Leggett & Platt was taken off the aristocrat list when its market cap fell below what the SP500 needed, so they moved onto the SP midcap 400, which means it automatically can't be part of the SP500 dividend aristocrats list, even though they continued to increase their dividend. Remember, market cap is just stock price multiplied by outstanding shares. Leg is about $35 a share, and there are about 135 million shares outstanding, so its market cap is about $4.7 billion, which is below the minimum bar for the SP500. Fun fact, Leg is one of my smaller positions and I have 974 shares of it, which means I own 0.00072% of it. So not a baller, I guess. 
Okay, then in 2020, Ross Stores was removed from the dividend risk rat list when it suspended its dividend due to the pandemic. My wife likes going to Ross, but loves going to Target even more, which is the dividend risk rat itself. Another company that lost their risk rat status in 2020 was Helmerk and Payne. They operate in the oil space and are a great example of how even an awesome dividend history can sometimes come to an end. They had paid a growing dividend for 47 consecutive years, thus it was close to becoming a dividend king, and it means they made it through multiple recessions. But in 2020 they got hit by the pandemic and the oil price wars and they had to cut their dividend. Okay, then going back to 2016 is when the next company was removed from the aristocrat list, and that was Chubb Insurance, which was removed upon acquisition by Ace Limited, which was then re-added in 2019. What happened was prior to the merger of Chubb and Ace, those two companies had raised their dividends for 33 and 22 consecutive years, respectively. So with the merger, the combined entity was at the lower end, thus at 22 years. So it needed three more years of raises to get back on the list as the new entity, which it did. Going back to 2015, we find that Family Dollar Stores was removed from the aristocrat list due to its purchase by Dollar Tree, and Sigma Aldrich was removed from the list due to its acquisition by Merck Group. In 2014, Bemis fell off the SP500 index and therefore was removed from the aristocrat list. They're a packaging company that actually was bought by Amcor a few years ago, which itself is a dividend aristocrat, so I guess they kind of made it back on the list. In 2013, Pitney Bowes, a shipping and mailing company, was removed from the aristocrat list after it cut its dividend by almost 50%. Their stock price crashed 15% on the news. Apparently its debt had gotten out of control, so they finally had to cut the dividend. And then in 2012, CenturyLink was removed from the index. When they announced the cut, their stock fell like 20%. CenturyLink had 37 consecutive years of yearly dividend increases, but they had been using too much debt to acquire companies. Like from 2008 to 2013, it's 6x its debt. So sure, its revenue growth went up, but at too much of a cost. So they cut their dividend, and then of course lots of investors immediately sold. And then we come to the big financial crisis, where a bloodbath of dividend cuts happened, with 19 aristocrats losing their status. So in 2010, the ones that fell off the list were Avery Dennison, BB&T, Gannett, General Electric, Johnson Controls, Leg Mason, M&T Bank, Pfizer, State Street Bank, and U.S. Bancorp. In 2009, the cutters that fell off the list included Anheuser-Busch, Bank of America, Comerica, Fifth Third Bank, Keycor, Progressive, Regions Financial, Synovus Financial, and Wrigley Company, which was acquired by Mars. So there are a plethora of reasons why we've seen companies cut their dividend. Could be due to getting bought out, or due to black swan events, or could be simply bad management decisions. Nothing is ever guaranteed with investing. But one thing that is guaranteed is that if you don't play the game, then that's a sure way to lose. Chasing hype stuff is another way you can lose. We were just talking about hype stuff on my Discord, and I thought I'd show you this chart of Beyond Meat. It came out, and most people bought late on the hype, driving it up, and you can see it hit almost 250 bucks a share almost three years ago. And since then, it's fallen 95%. When times get tough, people often cut out anything that isn't a need. Like, you need band-aids, so good or bad times don't matter, you still buy them. You need toilet paper. You need toothpaste. You don't need fake meat. Once the novelty wears off, you're holding a bag of crop. Get it? Crop? <laughs> sure, you might want it, but when your wallet gets tight and when prices go up too much, you scale back to the essentials. I've actually not looked at their financials at all. Long term, I hope they come storming back. But I'll stick to my boring companies that make products you need. The way I win in all market conditions is by owning companies that make stuff you gotta have. Then I can just sit back and watch the profits trickle into my bank account, regardless of what's happening in the world. Each person going through a McDonald's drive through means more money flowing into my pockets. But even they might have to cut their dividends someday. And I get it, that would suck. If you invest in dividend companies long enough, you'll eventually get hit with a cut or two. And if your company does get hit, then it's okay to be annoyed for a minute, and then you gotta keep moving forward. Failing isn't falling down, it's staying down. Every investor gets punched in the gut sometimes, and you gotta come to terms with that. But in my experience, if you can push through the hard times and keep investing in quality assets, then in the long run you'll win, and you'll win beyond your wildest dreams. Each dollar you invest is like another rep at the gym. It's the right thing to do in the long term, but you won't see results overnight. The more you cut your expenses, the more you can drive money into your portfolio. The more creative you can get with your side hustles, the more money you can drive into your portfolio. Sometimes I get comments from people telling me why they could never build a big portfolio because they don't make enough money. My response is I get it, but think more creatively. 
I read this interesting thread on Twitter about a Stanford business professor that split her business class into a bunch of teams and gave each team five bucks in two hours and told them to make as much money as possible and then come back and do a presentation to the class. Most teams didn't do very well and they just tried to flip stuff. Like they bought something for five bucks at a store and then sold it for a few more bucks on the street. Overall their return was pretty minimal. The team that finished in second place was more creative. They realized that their goal was to make the most money in two hours, and the five dollars was just a distraction. They ended up making reservations at a restaurant and then sold their reservations to people who didn't want to wait in line. Nifty. But the winning team got even more creative. They not only realized that the five bucks given to them was mostly a distraction, but they also realized that there was a valuable asset hidden in the challenge. You know what it was? The presentation itself. So they quickly reached out to a bunch of local companies and got bids for how much these companies would pay to be able to pitch their business as a three minute ad spot to a room of Stanford business students. After some negotiation they closed a deal for 650 bucks. They were the winners of the challenge and it wasn't even close. The big lesson is to become more creative and flexible and think outside the box. You might have assets you don't even realize. The obvious path forward to make money isn't always the best one or even a great one. A better path is in front of you but it might be hard to see. I was recently talking to a relative who was worried about how they could retire. I asked them if they were investing and they said they had been for a long time, but when they checked their portfolio it seemed like it was always going down. This was an intelligent person I was talking to, but they weren't living frugally and they didn't believe that investing was a great way to achieve financial goals. They basically thought that social security was their best bet. I talked about the potential of dividends with them, which they never actually heard of before, so hopefully I influenced them positively. But what it really showed me was that most people, even those with great jobs, have no idea about how they will retire in comfort, or even retire at all. So if you're watching this video then realize that you're already far ahead of so many people out there. I mean you're actually spending time learning about how to improve your finances. You guys know that each dollar you invest in quality dividend stocks is like another cash tree you plant on your farm. But some people aren't as lucky as you. I mean I had a guy who just left a comment on one of my vids this week who said that I was everything that was wrong with capitalism. What bothered me wasn't what he said, but that the guy probably isn't investing. I don't care if you hate the game, but I do care if you aren't taking the steps to go on a better financial path. It's bad that so many people are financially illiterate. Like I just saw an article that talked about a major Roth IRA mistake that some people are making. It said that a TikToker shared a tip that went viral that revealed a common investing mistake that she had fallen prey to. Apparently she had been investing money into a Roth IRA for two years, every single month, but it wasn't until she started dating someone in finance that she learned that you actually had to buy a stock once you deposited cash into your Roth. It makes sense when you think about it. I mean I talk about investing into your Roth, but am I clear enough to say deposit cash into a Roth and then buy a quality stock with the cash? The real takeaway is congrats for any of you that actually watch videos like mine in hopes of becoming more financially literate. If you made it to this point then please leave me a comment telling me you watched the entire video so I can see who my best subscribers are. Plus it helps the algorithm promote my videos more when you leave a comment. And on that note I'd like to shout out my newest Patreon aristocrats who managed to sign up since my last video. If you're interested in getting access to my spreadsheet product and the other benefits of my Patreons then go to patreon.com, search for Gen X Dividend Investor and then if I have any seats open at the aristocrat or king tiers then sign up and within a few hours I'll email you instructions on how to access my spreadsheet along with we'll share some private tutorial videos on how to use it. I tend to sell out of seats quickly when I open them up and I limit access due to the support I provide. So thank yous go out to David B, Lazy Lexi, Robert M, Young Laos, Voodoo Child, Gunny, Bouquet, Albert L, BC Caveman 90, and The Cattery. I'd also like to thank Jackalope who signed up for an entire year so he gets a 10% discount. And thank you JDubs22 who also signed up for an entire year. Aristocrats gain access to my dividend portfolio tracker spreadsheet, which I use in lots of my videos, and they get special access to various private channels on my Discord, including one which lets you watch my videos before I release them publicly on YouTube, as well as lets you vote on which thumbnails I should use, and of course you get more direct access to me. They also get a shout out as you just heard, and I add them to my scrolling news sticker on my videos. Finally I urge everyone to join my free dividend Discord chat server, which has thousands of dividend investors on it from around the world. Regardless of what you do, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Thanks for watching, stay positive, and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor, and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.